Vendettas. Let us settle as best we can the vendettas that have ravaged the house of De Silva over the past seventy er uh, years. Came thought from Imperator Macronis. Bitis entered Tarcon Palace where potentate Method De Silva sat along Macronis De Silva. Chris Titan walked, linking arms with Bitis. She led him to stand next to Onyxillion, Micron and Warloki in a group close to the potentate Diamonde and, S and Silva De Silva, along with Harley and Eras, stood apart, observing. They chose silence. The House of De Silva has changed. We must relinquish our reputation for unbridled power without accountability. To me, being a De Silva should mean something different, more, something honourable. Came thought from Chris Titan. Bittis left Chris Titan with his siblings strolling over to Macrollis they embraced. Welcome back. I missed you. The stars missed you. Look up often, you will see them smiling down on you. Came secluded thought from Bittis to Macrollis. He smiled. What say you, Leth Kaleja? Will what we wrought here endure? Came thought from Method. Yes. During the infancy, infancy of Iaria and Diala, it will endure. She looked at Macrollis. And the unnamed organate Imperator Sil Africa now carries. Blessings be to Trine. She looked back, staring at Method, and the other organet children to come from this mighty house. She looked at Chris Titan, Onyxillion, Micron, Warloki, Diamonde and Silver. Mourn for your losses, but do not question Milky Way's will. I promise you what happened here will be the stuff of legend in the centuries to come. When the worlds you cultivate look back on their house's heroic past. Far indeed has the house of De Silva come from the little places of planet Earth, across two star systems. Why stop now when the Milky Way is infinite? Put down your vendettas, let the souls of Abyss, Silfarion, Alphad, Orgul, Invogrod, Carlos, Silesia, Shra, and Felix, all De Silva, rest in peace. Build back anew. Bittis looked up, raised her hands to DeWitt. Please, ye mighty, relinquish your vendettas. The Leth Kaleja has shared her thoughts, and I am more than inclined to agree. What say you, uncle? Came thought from Macrollis to Method. Those who care to uphold the reputation of my last name are dead. Perhaps their ilk will manifest in the coming organet children born of this house. Perhaps not. I was born without the name De Silva in my ear. Until I met Onyx, I communicated by images conveyed by thought. Thus I learned my lineage much later. So I have little loyalty and less to hold in reverence than others do. To me, it is but a name. Nothing further attaches to it. I have lost sons and relatives because they carried this name. But I think that I would not have been so if they were named otherwise. I say quash the vendettas that to this very moment, with an honest heart, I confess, I never utterly understood. I do know that this name carries indomitable blood, and to overlook this brings about catastrophe. So why not give those of our bloodline an official office where we can pour our willfulness into, for the good of all sentient beings? This would be a good trap to be ensnared in, from Organon to Earth and beyond, wherever we that the Silvers may emerge. That is my thought. 
conveyed such did potentate method. Chris Titan stepped forth. If to pursue pieces of virtue, let me repeat. If to pursue peace is a virtue, if not, it ought to be. Commission the enhanced Peace Corps of Milky Way. Let my siblings and me create strategy and plans for lasting peace, and those of our bloodline will be charged at birth to follow the disciplines of undeniable principles of peace that we endeavour to establish. You mean a moral law for the enhanced? Interjected thought from Micron. Yes, brother came thought in response from Chris Titan. The order of moral de Silva, came thought from Warloki. I am minded, suggested, I am minded suggesting that we change our last name to moral de Silva, came thought from Macrollis. After one of our bloodlines sufficiently attains a level of understanding of the principles of peace, they should then carry the new name to indicate such proficiency, proficiency, hence dignity in Milky Way, responded Chris Titan. This calling will be passed down from parental to offspring, putting the principles of peace into their very memes and one day their enhanced DNA. To carry the name of Moral de Silva should be an order cultivated like faith, forever opposed to hate. Look, Macrollis, is he not Organon's cleverest son? Doted thought for method. To that I would add one of Milky Way's most gifted minds. Let us do as he suggests, came thought from Macrollis. I agree, concurred the mind of method. Chris Titan, Onyxillion, Micron and Warloki stepped forward. Each took a knee before Imperator Macrollis. We swear to relinquish all vendettas from the past in the House of De Silva. Imperator, we ask that you grant us the Order of Morale De Silva. Came thought from Chris Titan. Each of his brothers repeated this request conveying such to Imperator Macrollis. I hear your oaths and grant your wish. Let none do otherwise and be free of punishment, came solemn thought from Imperator Macrollis. The vendettas of the House of De Silva have been laid to rest. Long may the principles of peace endure through the order of Moral de Silva. The word of the Imperators must be obeyed, came resounding thought from potentate method. Bittis looked up, raised her hands, and span in a slow circular motion, conveying thought. So be it, let the Imperators' will be done. Living, Shilipa and Marrero Errol, along with Jodal Trell, stepped into the care area located on the upper floors of one of the Orgoline or hanging structures. To their surprise, there was Diana Tapp, sitting up, recuperating on a floating flat surface. She was exchanging thought with an individual with one hand. Is that not Chaldean crit call? came thought from Shilipa. Yes, he had such bearing in his stature, and from reports following the Kratos coup d'etat, he lost a hand. It is he, of that I am sure, came thought from Marrero. Instead of staring, let us go and take a closer look, suggested thought from ever-practical Jodal. Esteemed Kratolian counsellors, welcome. I am immensely encouraged to see all three of you looking well, came thought from Diana. 
Forgive me for what happened, truly. None of you should have been here. I ask for your forgiveness. Ariane was right, first citizen. Patriotism was best served on two feet. May we add in a state-of-the-art Kratelian bot armoured bodysuit and not sitting at a seat. Jodal smiled. Diana was indifferent. Gone seem the cavalier might is right, individual buccaneering spirit. Her response surprised them even more. Not so, Jadal. To see you here is a betrayal of the trust the Assembly put in the office of the First Citizens. Your independence and prestige should have been protected and never ever subject to attack by, by Ariane or me who wielded too much power and proved unable to refrain from abusing that power which could have led to your deaths. We were wrong and although I was unconscious I still find it hard not to experience blame. Look, Councillor Chaldeon Critkol came to apologise for attempting to take my life. We the living should be incredibly grateful when we are spared from death. Exchanging thought with him enlightens me. We create our own nemesis and Chaldeon is as much a construct of my own mind as he is flesh and enhanced blood. What are you saying, first citizen? He is a traitor. Though prior to that act we all had the utmost respect in whatever he expressed. Came thought from Shilipa. No. I betrayed him. We the first citizens betrayed all of you. I accept his, his apology. Back then I was intoxicated with power. Even though it appeared normal to me and Ariane, it was not. We alienated many of Kratol's citizens. See for yourself, look outside, we are burying Kratolians who chose to fight against us. That is the degree to which we betrayed their trust. They would take up arms against their first citizen and their great assembly members. Shilipa. I think not Ariane and I can walk away from this and claim not to have been intoxicated with power. No, I am sober now. I hear Chaldeon. I see my life for what it has become. When I get up from this bed I will leave a part of me here. Diana's stream of thought was interrupted. What do you mean, first citizen? queried the mind of Jodal. All sin, all do wrong. To exist is an error, a crossover between light and matter, where to be or not to be gives rise to conscious state. We are wrapped in the physical polarities of wet and dry, light and dark, pull and push, and on and on. What do you, that we cannot see our way to forgiving you. Did you not show us like flies a way out of the bottle we knew to be planet Earth? Put such thoughts of self-recrimination aside. See, we have made it through to the light. Rejoice, first citizen, rejoice. The office of the first citizen will cease. This is the right thing to do. To betray a trust and persist cannot ever be a president in Milky Way. Good practice leads to good governance. The great assembly containing the Kratolian council will assume the sovereignty of Kratol. Enceladus' first city-state. Build more, Jodal. Be more, Shilipa. And you, Marrero, show me better. You too, Chaldeon. This, my last word, is law. I will relocate to Europa. Much work Arian and I must do there. 
we will turn it from a military colony to something quite different. We intend to raise Iaria and Diala there, and take that vacation I have been promising myself since my days as a WizKid CEO in the Melodian Vale, Silicon Valley back on Earth. It has been a long journey, but even I know when it is time to wrap it up. This latest episode was no mean feat. Goodwill from unexpected sources saved my techno skin. I am lucky to escape with the living. I will take this latest win and call it quits. Yep, I sure will. Convey the stream of profound thought from Diana Tapp. Diana, we will make you proud. Come, Chaldeon, we have work to do. Do not worry about that hand. We will replace it forthwith. The medics in Opital grow them for fun. It won't take long. It will be a itchy at first and a little odd, but after a hot minute, it will feel like your own. Came thought from Marrero. They all departed from Diana Tapp's side, bedside. About to rest again, Diana looked up. Chris Titan. What a surprise, came thought from Diana. Diana, I just wanted to see how you were holding up, came thought in reply from Chris Titan. He stared at Diana. She knew why. Come. She extended her arms outward, inviting in him in. He entered within, without reservation, and both remained there, shedding enhanced tears, such that they would later stress each had something fluffy in their eyes. I am sorry, Chris Titan. I always wanted to tell you, thank you for saving my life. But things went crazy, we ended up betraying the living. Horrid things happen in war, and good things too, acts of kindness and sacrifice. Diana, thank you for saving my mother's life. I want to call you auntie again, and when you see auntie Ariane, please tell her I forgive her. Why don't you tell her yourself? Come with me back to Europa for a time at least. No, auntie. My destiny lies in the opposite direction. I will be leaving Organon with the Imperator migration. Auntie Diana, we may never see each other again. Oh, oh, I understand now. You have come to convey goodbye. Yes, Auntie. But one day in the future I will see my cousins, Iaria and Diala, when they enroll into the Order of Moral de Silva to study the principles of peace. Chris Titan, ever you, above all in Milky Way, impress me with your shrewd mind. It will be an honour to have you receive our twins. Diana hugged him tighter. He did not resist. There they remained hugging and wiping fluff from each other's eyes. Migration. Look, Macrolis. Elaine looks comfortable here. Came thought from South Africa to Macrolis. Treze's heart has her love. This is the source of her comfort. Came reply from Macrolis's mind. South Africa looked down, smiling at baby Centuria Amordone, swaddled comfortably in her arms. So cute, she mused. George is not so comfortable. Look, he misses home. I at least can see that clearly. Next, my love, you will note that Alexio needs to spend more time with her family. But her family is here except for her grandparents. Came thought from Macrolis. Perhaps, replied South Africa using the human tongue, turning to El Caterina who sat beside her, her head leaning upon South Africa's shoulder, an arm around her waist, watching adoringly as her sister-in-law and best friend rocked Centuria Amordone 
gently in her arms. El Caterina, don't you think it's time to make the long journey home? King Arthur and Queen Joan need to know about them, about and about Thom. Palinti has not expressed a desire to go home, but I would like to visit at least. I didn't think I would be happy on another planet, in a different star system, heavens. When I was a child, such things were science fiction, but here we are talking about visiting Earth. Yes, Sil Africa, I would like my brother, the King, and Queen Joan to see Centauria. It is important for Kenya and Jomo to meet her too, replied El Caterina. See, Macrolis, it is time. El Caterina, I wish I could go with you to see the lush land and contented peoples of Aia and spend time with loved ones, reminisced Sil Africa. I don't feel the need to return. I want to go further, explore the heart of Milky Way, find a home, Palintir mused out loud. What about me, honey? asked El Caterina. Forever, I want you by my side. Prescient technology allows humans to venture into deep space and feel protected. I spoke to a human, a lieutenant, and he shared a tip. He said to get the optimum out of a prescient bodysuit, one should update it every single third of a cycle. He gave it the thumbs up during the war, said he never felt safer. Explained Palinta. Don't worry, El Caterina, wherever we go, it will be as a family. But not to Earth, replied El Caterina. Macrolis interjected ahead of Palinta's attempt. I would love to look upon the place of my birth the ice moon Enceladus, and perhaps see Kratol and visit the cylindrical structures. He turned to face South Africa, the place we shared our first kiss. El Caterina giggled. Stop that, grinned South Africa to El Caterina. Don't encourage him. You stop. You know you like it, pushing pushed back El Caterina. Go on, show him love in return. Like Shardu would say, he must always seek love in your eyes, so you must encourage him, always, go on, she added. Okay, okay, replied Sil Africa. Macrolis, come here, that was so sweet. Macrolis came closer and leant in over Centauria, who now opened her baby eyes. Sil Africa leaned in, kissing him gently. I love you. She whispered ahead of her lips, smooching his tenderly, this time on his cheek. Centauria Omadone smiled. Look, she's smiling, noted Palintir. Elaine heard him, and now Elixir spotted the group around Centauria. She walked over. George did too. She's not smiling, she's too young said Elaine. Yes, she is, pointed out Elixir, bringing her attention to an orange halo foaming around, forming around Centauria's head. The glow spread to Sil Africa's stomach. Sully Jarlis, mumbled Sil Africa, looking up at Macrolis. My lord, our son, told us his name. He is Sully Jarlis. Macrolis kissed her again. Then everyone there kissed her, but now Centauria's orange glow spread from Sil Africa's belly toward Elaine, who stopped then hurriedly walked away from the group. Trine has visited Elaine too. Noted Sil Africa looking up at Macrolis. It is time for us to take her home. I want to go home. I want to see Grandmama said Elixir. El Caterina placed a hand on her. Yes, my sweet, we will take you home. I miss the rolling hills of York and the bustle of London town. I miss rain, morning frost in March and the robin redbreast chirping at the coming of April 
reminded me of the promise of spring. I miss misty overcast days, indifferent smiles and lyrical poetic, silly goblin and fairy stories. I miss pints of ale and aimless debates with my mates in the long humid light nights around Whitson. I miss England, its indifferent sunshine and its nostalgic hum harping on at things long lost in time. Please Auntie El, Auntie South Africa, the war is over. I've had my fill of galactic battles and alien landscapes. Take me home where I belong, mused George forlornly, adding, Thom's memories need to go home now. Well, if you put it like that, George, so melancholy yet so sweet, let the migration begin, announced South Africa. The word of the Imperator must be obeyed, came thought from Imperator Macrolis, and the migration from Organon commenced. Millions of Aeans, including Amir Sogolo, chose to remain on Organon. They applied their skills and energies to rebuilding the destruction caused by war. Many too were caught by trine cycles and made Organon their home as Organinians and Kratolians and humans fused into a community eventually becoming the Alpha Centaurian civilization. Method and Onyx chose to leave Organon with the migration. They left Shira, blessed Aeon there. She could not leave the memory of Jula Felith so soon. Overseeing the building of a commemorative monument over the spot where the galactic hero Jula Felith died. The largest host to migrate with the Imperators contained Aeans, Kratolians, Europeans, Organinians, Orsmiths, Humans, Humkeys. Yes, even Humkeys were curious to know what lay beyond their home world. The migration left out from Alpha Centauri a massive host of fleets journeying back across the black blackout zone divide between the triple star system and the solar system. When they arrived at Europa, Diana Tap left them, bidding all farewell as she descended to Jupiter Tower to reunite with Ariane in time for the birth of the twins. Iaria and Diala. Then on to Enceladus, where Kratolian counsellors Shilipa Marrero, Jordal and Chaldeon said farewell as they re-entered Kratol to begin rebuilding anew. At the asteroid belt many Orsmiths and Kratolians said farewell, but Tintu and Harlian were not amongst those who returned. They remained with the migration. Then close, but not too close to Earth's orbit, El Caterina, Centauria, Amadoni, Elaine, George and Elixir travelled to Earth. Queen Joan and King Arthur were overjoyed to see them again. There was great national sadness regarding the death of Thom. El Caterina and Tavkaius travelled on to Aia, to the palatial palace, to show off Centauria, to Empress and Emperor Shajola III. El Caterina and Centauria brought joy back as they strolled in the herb garden in time for the imperial birth. But this is a story for another time. El Caterina and Elaine did not stay on earth. El Caterina and Centauria returned to Palintia and Elaine to Treze. Humans from the consumptionist movement returned in solidarity with those of Silk Road and together they delivered the Zooks to the English authorities who, having reversed their decision to leave the Western Alliance, promptly extradited 
both Bergy and Prishan to the American authorities at the request of the newly elected President of the United States, Eleanor Chance. The consumptionist movement immediately terminated the CEOs upon learning what had happened in deep space and approached King Arthur and Queen Joan to become royal patrons of the consumptionist movement. The UK government did not interfere and Queen Joan became officially a public power in her own right. Leth Kaleja Bittis Matimani relinquished her priestess title to Injata Binkua, announced her engagement to Tinto Cyrillic, and was never seen on Earth again after the migration left Earth's orbit. But before they left the Empress, Kenyi and Jomo, along with many Aien dignitaries, journeyed to the migration to spend time with Sil Africa, the Emperor Anitsu, Barnegas and other humans wore present bodysuits. It was a wonderful occasion and farewells were deeply profound. Diamonde and Silver remained in the migration after visiting Earth to settle Lady Fairchild and Baroness Felaire's estates. Diamonde and Harlian were betrothed on Earth in Brazil at the hereditary de Silva family residence in Rio de Janeiro. Tinto stepped forth to give Harlian away. Not to be outdone, Diomonde did the same for Bittis, delivering her into the marital hand of Tinto. Shrepril sent up sparkles to memorialise the joyful event. During the celebrations, Bittis sent secluded messages to the Imperators. Sil Africa and Macrolis walked along the long visor screen, looking down at Earth as the migration began to drift away. You are both imperators over all Milky Way. There are none left who claim this truth thwarted. And the migration drifted on past Earth, further and further away journeying into the Andromeda system and another and another until they found the place that would become the capital world at the centre of the Milky Way. But again, this is another story. Clark Residence, Kensington, London, UK Have you been there, brother? said Idril to Luthien. Yes, sister. Amazing beyond anything you could possibly dream of, replied Luthien. Are we humans still there? asked Idril. We are, but we are quite different from now how we are here on Earth. But indeed we are still human with our emotions, reasons and courageous hearts. Yes, sister. We are still there, replied Luthien. Warriors, weapons and wireless technology. Brother, they are worthless compared to our humanity. I wish I had been a time traveller like you, instead of a barrister, now soldier suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. You lucked out, brother. Noted a drill. Father is proud of you. You do well, sister. You bring honour to our family. But you, brother... Look at the wonderful things you have beheld. Tell me more about the Imperators. What was Sulijalis like? Beseeched Idril, sitting up. She looked tired but eager to hear more. Tomorrow, sister, I will tell you about the little prince Sulijalis tomorrow. Here to the throne of the Imperators over all enhanced in the Milky Way. Very much like his grandmother, Diana Tap is that one, young Sulijalis. Don't tease me, Luthien, you better come back tomorrow, insisted Idril. Her eyes closed and her mind slipped into dreams of a futuristic Milky Way without warriors, weapons or aberrant wireless technology. 
The End